you all for being here this morning. I'm going to get into the Word. So, Father, I thank you for your presence here this morning. I thank you, Father God, that your Word will come forth exactly the way you've given it to me. If there's something that I shouldn't say, Father, then you'll let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If there's something you want me to say, then bring it to my remembrance. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of you came to church expecting to receive from God? Today? Yes. Hallelujah. See, I believe that God always wants us to come to church believing that we are going to receive something and receive something good. Now, right now, we're going to continue our teaching on how God will restore. See, it doesn't matter what you're going through in your life. It doesn't matter about any of your challenges that you might be facing. God wants us to know that he can restore, that he can give you back everything that has been stolen. Come on. God has made this promise in his word. And, you know, let's face it, life is made up of good times and bad times. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Sometimes the, the bad things we experience, it could be a loss of a relationship, it could be the loss of a loved one, um, maybe a loss of finances or, or even your health. And many times we experience these things because of choices that we have made in our lives or maybe uh, a choice that somebody else made that affected our lives. And then also it's the devil because he came to kill, to steal and destroy. And what we find is that these losses, they can create a void in our lives. You can end up living your life with that sense of, of loss, a sense of regret. And so what happens is we think we have to carry that void into the future. And, but God has purposed that he wants to bring restoration into our lives. It's his will and it's his plan. Remember I had shared with you that after, you know, after Sal had died, you know, it was like everything, I felt like everything had been stolen from me. So even when things are going well in my life, they just don't feel the way that they used to feel because when right. you've experienced that sense of loss, yes. it just keeps coming up and it continues to rob you of any joy yes. that you might have. It's mm -hmm. like you, you kind of carry that sense of loss into your future. I mean, do, does anybody really understand yes. what yes. I'm saying? Yes. yes. See, that loss will, will keep stealing from you and it, 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 it can drain the life out of you at times. Yes. But I believe that God wants us to know that all those years that have been stolen, God can restore. He wants us to live our lives with a sense of, of, of uh, satisfaction and not regret. Mm. In Acts chapter 3, Jesus is gone, and Peter is speaking, and he's basically telling all the people that there's going to be a time of, rest, of refreshing, meaning that God is going to restore all those things to us when Jesus comes back. And you and I are now living in that time period, and God wants to bring that restoration in our lives. It's a New Testament promise. See, every one of us in this room has experienced some sense of loss. Maybe, maybe it was your innocence that was stolen from you as a child. And that's very sad because you can't erase that time. You can't pretend that that didn't happen. But you can't let that doubt rob you from believing that God wants to restore that area of your life. Right. And I'm no different because I'm still believing God for restoration. Yeah. You know, I, I know when I go home every day, I go home to an empty house. But does that mean that there's no restoration for me? Come on. No, there is restoration right. for me. There's restoration for you. So let God define that restoration in your life. In other words, don't let your mind tell you that the promises of God can't come to pass in your life. Let God be bigger than that doubt. Amen. In fact, you know what? Sometimes you have to tell doubt to shut up. That's right. Yeah. You have to get that bold and let Amen. God be bigger in your life. Now, there are areas of restoration that you can see with your eyes. For instance, I remember uh, when I lived in Randolph, about two doors down there was a family, and the young girl was doing homework at night. She had a candle lit. <coughs> and she fell asleep. The candle fell, and the house caught on fire. Well, when we got up in the morning, the back end of the house, it looked like a bomb hit it because it had no roof. It was horrible. But within one year, that whole house was rebuilt. It was bigger and better than the one that they originally had. I mean, thank God that no one was hurt. So, you know, if you lost your house, guess what? God can get you another house. Amen. Amen. You know, this is God we're talking about. Yes. He's the one who, who parted the Red Sea. He's Amen. the one who raised Jesus from the dead. He can get you another house. Now, there are people who would say, but pastor, I don't have any credit. I can't get a house. 
I can't get a car. Well, you know what? I could fill this room with, with people who have said, I couldn't get a mortgage. I no. couldn't get a car. Amen. They stayed faithful to God. They paid their tithes, their offerings. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Amen. They Amen. ended up yes. buying homes That's right. for the Amen. first time, Amen. getting mortgages Come for the on. first time. Preach. You know, the only thing that I would say is always be a good steward of yes. what God Amen. gives you. Take care of what he gives you. Take care of your car. Take Amen. care of your house because Amen. that's when you'll get bigger and better. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Yes. Go over to Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. I want to make this statement to you. We can and we need and we should change our expectation to restoration instead of loss. You know, like I said before, I'm still waiting for that restoration in my life. I'm still believing for God's promises, and I'm drawn from his strength because that's what's going to cause me to get well. That's what's going to cause me to be happy. In Joel chapter 2, in verse 15, it says, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Now, in the Old Testament, the word Zion, it means church. So God is saying to us today, church, wake up. It's time to wake up. And look at verse 23. It says, be glad, you children of Zion. He's speaking to you and to me, and he's saying, be glad, children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. The word Lord here is the word Yahweh. It means redeemer, deliverer, and savior. So he's talking to us who are in this room this morning, and he's saying, rejoice, be glad, give thanks, for he, is, for he has given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down to, for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. The word rain here is, is figurative. It means God's blessings in a time of joy. So he's saying to us that throughout your life, God is going to rain down blessings on you and times of joy. This is God's spoken word for us in the New Testament. And the fruit of this is in verse 24. It says, the floor shall be full of, vat, of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore or replace to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the pommel worm, my great army which I sent among you. So again, he said, I will restore. You see, this is very personal because he could have said, I will restore to them, but he didn't. He said, I'll restore to you, to you. And remember, we said in Exodus chapter 20, when God was defining restoration under the law, he said, when you come before Elohim, your God, you have to say, Lord, that's mine. Restoration is mm. mine. Remember, yeah. when somebody stole from you, they didn't pay you back what they stole. They had to give you more. Yeah. So we have to be able to say, Lord, this is mine. Yes. That belongs to me. Amen. Happiness is mine. Mm. Joy is mine. Come on. God said, I will restore to you. Amen. He said, I will restore to you the years that you, that you lost and the fruit, and you'll get it all back, and you're going to live your life with that sense of satisfaction instead of regret. Amen. I, and I think this is important for us to know today because, you know, some of us, our pain, our hurt goes so far back mm -hmm. that there are things we just don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that had happened to me as a child that I didn't tell anybody until maybe I was in my 20s. Yeah. And even some of those things, I didn't tell the whole story. Mm -hmm. It's only now mm -hmm. that I'm finally letting things go. Yes. Yeah. I never would talk about it. Things that were so embarrassing, but now they're helping other mm -hmm. people to yes, grow in yes. the things of God. Yeah. Amen. It's good. But Jesus has come into this room and he's saying, all those years that, I, that have been stolen, he's saying, I'm going to restore them to you. Thank you. And, and you know, you get, your mind will tell you how. How could this ever happen? Again, you have to tell your mind, just stop. Stop. And just listen to Jesus. Look to him and say, Lord, that is mine. Again, he said, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Now, we don't have locusts here. But let me tell you something about locusts. They appear suddenly, and they disappear suddenly. But when they come, they wipe out all the, the leaves, the fruit, and the, and the bark for that matter. They leave a great devastation behind. There is nothing left. Now, within the last couple of months, I have...
close friends who lost their firstborn sons. It was like the locusts came through those homes mm -hmm. and left devastation. They lost their peace. They left, lost their joy. Mm -hmm. You know, those two young men, they didn't know when they got up that morning that that was their last day here on this earth. Again, all their all the families, their joy has been stripped from them. So God is making us aware of the locust. They appear suddenly, and then they disappear suddenly. Mm -hmm. the, in the Bible, locust represents a day, a time, or a season. So even if you've come to a season of devastation, God wants, to know, wants us to know that he's going to bring restoration into your life. Again, he said, I will restore to you the years the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Now, when it says my great army that I sent among you, that's not translated correctly. What he's saying is the great army which came among you because, according to James chapter 1, God doesn't test, tempt, or try any man. Mm -hmm. So God didn't send the army, but this army came, and it says, I will restore what the locust has eaten, and you shall eat in plenty. Now that's mm -hmm. not supposed to happen, because once the locusts come through, everything is gone, so there's famine, and then of course there is death, there's nothing to eat. Yeah. But yet he said, even what the locust has eaten, you're going to eat in plenty, you'll be satisfied. This is a promise. You know, I'm going to break this down again. In verse 25, it says, I will restore to you the years the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which came among you. Now, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, they're not different kinds of pests. There are different stages of the locust development coming against your life. And what God is showing us no matter what stage the locust is in attacking your life, God can stop it. He can bring restoration into your life. But we need to be aware of this locust that's in our house. Mm. We can't let it grow to full maturity. He said, first the locust came, then the canker worm. Now the canker worm, it's, uh, it doesn't have any wings. It creeps along, it moves very, very slowly. It doesn't mean they can't eat. They just move and creep along. Doesn't it sound familiar? Satan roams around like a roaring lion, yes. seeking whom he may devour. Come on. You know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm not trying to get into meddling in, in your home or anything. But allow me to say this, because for some people, that locust is already in your marriage. That's right. That thing is creeping around in your house. That's right. Maybe it's not in your marriage, maybe it's your health, maybe That's it's right. problems with your children, right. maybe it's in your finances. Yes. Yes. And there's something, it's just chewing away, and things are not the way that they used to be. You know what, just because nobody's moved out, it doesn't mean that things are okay. If you don't deal with that locust, I'm telling you, it's going to mature into full destruction. Mm -hmm. You'll lose everything. Mm -hmm. But that's the first stage. The second stage is the caterpillar. Now the caterpillar is a little bit bigger. It moves a little bit faster. It's even more destructive. Can't fly, but it's destructive. So what happens is maybe you'll have problems in your house for a day, and then all of a sudden it's more than a day. Now it's weeks, and then it goes on for months. Then comes the palmer worm. This is that gnawing stage. The palmer worm doesn't destroy the crops. It just affects it. So your marriage isn't over, but it's not what it used to be. Because those little gnawing locusts are in your house. And now all of a sudden, you're bickering. You're getting on each other's nerves. You don't even want to see the person. You don't want to see their face. You want to see me? Wear a mask. You get to that point. I don't want you in my face. So God is saying, I used to do that, that's how I know. <laughs> really, well, Brandon and, and Sal, at the end of the day, I'd be so tired sometimes, and I'd say, listen, I'm going upstairs now, I'm going to turn on the TV, I don't want to see your face, if you want to come in, wear a mask. <laughs> so God is saying to us today, I don't care what stage devastation is in your life, recognize it, take authority over it, and look, he's saying, look to me to bring restoration in your life. 
You don't have to wait until something is completely wiped out. You know, don't, don't put up with this stuff anymore. Trust and believe God. You say, but pastor, it's gone too far. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. This is God we're talking about. He can restore anything. That's right. Amen. He said, the great army which was sent among you. The word army here means strength, wealth, those who are strong for war. There are people in this world who are strong for war. It's their nature. It's their personality. They love to fight. They live to fight. They enjoy fighting. In fact, they fight for fun. And if you encounter them, you better watch out because Amen. they are strong for war. Yes. Now, there are times you need to be strong in war, but there's a difference between fighting, being strong in war, and being strong for war. We don't have any young couples in here getting married, but if we did, what I would say, if you're dating somebody and they love to fight and they don't give up, they don't back down. I'm going to give you one word of advice. Run. <laughs> Remember that old song? Hop on the bus, Gus. Yeah. Make a new plan. Stay in. Don't need to be coy, boy. Just get yourself free. So I don't care how cute he is, how sweet she is. It all ends the minute you say, I do. <laughs> and you know what? I'm not just talking about men. Because some of us little cutie patooties, that's right. You know, what? we can chop your ears off and sew them on backwards. That's right. Because <laughs> we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> you know what? Don't think you're always right. Nobody's always right. That's right. The only one that was always right was Jesus. Amen. So the destruction comes, but look at verse 26. It says, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of Jesus, Yahweh, your God. In other words, praise him. Praise him no matter what you are going through because he can bring restoration into your life. Let me tell you something. And I didn't want to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. When, when Sal and I were, were married at one time, my, the marriage was going down the tubes. We had nothing, zero, nothing. And I said, you know what? You need to get out. You just need to get out, because I, 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 I can't do this anymore. You need to get out. There was no peace in the house. And he left, and he left for seven months. It was probably the worst seven months of my life. I told him to get out, but now he's gone. Yeah. It was the worst seven months of my life. Um, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, I was a mess. Yes. But God. Amen. I stayed Amen. faithful to God and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed the only way I knew how because all I had was those little beads that you do. Mm -hmm. That's all I had and I went to the candle room every day yes. and, I, and God yes. met me where I was at. Yes. And Amen. I just stayed faithful to God. Yes. And God restored Amen. what was dead. And this was dead. And usually they'll say, don't try to resurrect something if it's dead. It was dead. Mm. God Amen. resurrected God. it. And, and finally, we had something that I never thought we could have. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Jesus. So God is good. Amen. Amen. See, after the locust comes, usually there's nothing to eat. But God said, because of restoration, you're going to eat in plenty. And I, I have shared this to you many times before. I, I've prayed many times, and I said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Lord, will I ever be happy again? Well, guess what? Yes, because now it's ha finally happening. Amen. I taught you on the power of our words, mm -hmm. and I've known that for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And I started putting those things in operation. And when I open my eyes in the morning, the first thing I'll say is I renounce depression in Amen. Jesus' name. I renounce Amen. fear in the Come name on. of Jesus. I renounce anxiety in the name of Jesus. Yes. I renounce that codependency in Jesus' name. And then I'll say, Father, I thank you. Restoration is mine. Yes. Joy is mine. Amen. Peace is mine. Happiness is mine. It belongs to me. Yes. Amen. It can be died for I can have these things. Yes. And I tell you the truth. Two weeks already, a little over two weeks. When I wake up, I haven't been depressed and I haven't had anxiety, and that didn't happen to me for years. Amen. For years. Amen. Amen. So God, the word of God works. Amen. That's right. What could you believe him for? Come on. And you know what? You have to you have to pretend, you know who's that fighter, that Floyd, you could do this. You could do this. 
Susan, God's going to restore some things to you that have been stolen. He just said that to me. He's going to restore Thank some things because inside you, there's some hurts in there that are so painful. But God is just saying today he's going to restore those things back to you. Amen. Amen. Just hang, hang on to that word. Amen. Amen. See, I believe, though, this is why God had me teach you on words, why he had me teach you, teaching you right now on restoration, because he has a plan for my life. He has a plan for your yes. life. It's a good plan. Yes. It's not over till God says it's over. Right. You're going to eat in plenty. You're going to be satisfied, and you'll praise Jesus you. after restoration has come. Yes. See, God wants us to start praising him now for the restoration that's coming into our lives. Amen. Amen. The word eat in plenty in the, in the literal Hebrew it means you're going to eat up space. I mean, think about it. When, you, when you've when you lost something, it causes you, you want to hide. You don't want to come out. You want to, you want to kind of stay under the covers. You don't want to see anybody. You, you become that recluse almost. But that's, that's a trick of the devil. you got to unmask him. Throw the covers off and force yourself to get out. That's right. You can't stay in that place. That's what he wants you to do. Amen. So God's going to cause that empty space to get filled. You just need to change your thinking. My life, your life, is going to be filled. It also means to lay claim to space. Start saying, Lord, that is mine. And look at this, he said, and you will be satisfied. The word satisfied here, it means you should have so, you're going to have too much, too much, and you're going to enjoy his presence. Now, maybe that doesn't make sense to you right now, but what matters is he knows what he's saying to you. All you have to do is receive it. Amen. Having, Lord, having too much is mine. I could handle it, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just give it to me. I'll praise you, and we'll make it work together. Amen. Believe God for restoration in your life, because God's going to bring you to a place where you will have so, so much. Amen. And whatever's been going on in your life, all the pain, all the hurt, all the sorrow, and everything else that's happened, you know what we have to do as Christians? Somebody's hurting you, walk in love. That's right. Amen. Don't worry about changing them. That's not your job. Amen. It's his job to change Amen. them. Amen. It's your job as a sister or brother-in-law to just yes. walk in love. Amen. Tell Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, just close your eyes and raise your hands up to God. You know, and look at your life right now. Where, where is that loss? Where's the devastation? Is there a place that the locust has been? Uh, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's somebody you know. So, Father, we just lift up our hearts and our hands to you today. We declare restoration and say, that is mine. And we claim it today, Father. Yes. And, Lord, I believe that no matter what stage of de devastation your children may be in, our eyes are open. And we're not going to allow those worms to crawl around our house and affect yes. our crops. Yes. Lord, we stand against it. We look to you for restoration to everything that has been lost in our marriage, our finances, our kids, wherever the loss is, Father. We just look to you for re that restoration. And we ask today, Lord, that you heal, you repair, bring restoration. I thank you that our lives will become so big, Father. You're going to fill all those empty spaces. We're going to have so much and just enjoy your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.